We may be history nerds for the most part at Historic Pythabra Park, but we also understand our significant responsibility to maintain, respect, and study Pythabra's vast and diverse ecosystems and wildlife. The early Moravians also understood the importance of their natural environment. When they surveyed this area in 1752, they picked this spot because of its vast waterways, dense forests, and other natural resources. Pythabra surveyor and naturalist Christian Reuter drafted an exhaustive list of the flora and fauna of the region so the Moravians could better understand and organize their new environment. In that spirit, our virtual field trip today will be about the really cool amphibian activity that you can find right behind the village on the Greenway. That's where I am right now. As of today, park grounds are still open. So this could be a really fun activity to go ahead and get outside and explore, especially if you have kids. Stan Lake is a wildlife photographer and videographer who frequents the park often. I'm gonna turn it over to my friend Stan so he can show us some really cool amphibian activity he found in the park. Good afternoon, my name is Stan Lake. I am the host of Catching Creation. I'm also a filmmaker making a documentary about the biodiversity of North Carolina called North Carolina Wild. And right now I'm in one of my favorite spots. I'm in Bethabra Park, historic Bethabra Park. And I'm exploring a new side of the park for me because uh, historically I go over to where the marsh is, but right now the city has kind of bulldozed that whole area uh, to make some improvements on some infrastructure. And so I'm going to explore the other side towards the historic buildings and the, uh, the other areas. Now one thing right here behind me that's really exciting is there is what would look like to the untrained eye just a mud puddle on the Greenway Trail. Right now we're behind some of the historic buildings and uh, right off of Old Town Road. So if you take the Greenway from where I am to my right, uh, you run right into Old Town Road where the little pullout is where the old trail uh, that they're working on currently is. And as you can hear, we're pretty close to the street, but we're going to do a virtual tour of Bethabra right now. And the first thing I want to show you is right behind me in this mud puddle. It is full of toad tadpoles. Now I came earlier this year and I got to see these guys breeding uh, during one of the explosive uh, rainstorms that we had. They were everywhere calling up a storm, literally. And right now there is a bunch of tadpoles from the toads in this little mud puddle on the Greenway Trail. And it looks like some of them have legs, so I'm gonna to try to scoop one or two of them up and bring it back to the camera and show you. So stay tuned. I always carry a test tube with me <laughs> everywhere I go. I just stepped on the edge. I didn't want to disturb the habitat, but I got us one. And you can barely see the legs on him. But this is a tadpole from a toad. Uh, and you can tell by the way they look in some ways, but really the main reason I know is because I saw them breeding here. And right behind me, if you hear that trill, that's actually a toad calling right now which is crazy. Uh, I wasn't expecting to hear that. But uh, now these guys will breed from as early as late February on through into the summer. Um, they're pretty prolific breeders for lack of a better word. But yeah, these guys are fat and happy. And it's just a unlikely habitat. You would think that they wouldn't do well in any legitimate mud puddle that's on a concrete slab at the edge of a wood line. But uh, they are very adaptive and they will survive. Now if you'll look right here to my left, back up a little bit, right here to my left is a marshy area. Now this hasn't always been here. In the last maybe two or three years with all the excess rain that we've had, it's flooded a lot of portions of the park that didn't used to have water this consistently. 
Now, the amphibians this year took full advantage of this. I came out here one night in February and I saw spring peepers, chorus frogs, leopard frogs, uh, I believe I saw pickerel frogs, toads, and uh, this spot right here is so rich and full of life that a spot like this that you wouldn't think that you would pass right by on this greenway trail never think twice to look, but so many birds and butterflies and insects and different animals use these habitats. It's what's called an ephemeral wetland or a temporary wetland or a vernal pool, depending on where you come from and, and how you like to refer to it. I call them vernal pools. Uh, and basically that just means it's a temporary wetland that typically doesn't support fish, uh, which is great for amphibians uh, because they can breed in there, they can raise their eggs and tadpoles in there and without the threat of being preyed on by fish. So these are crucial habitats. They, they offer uh, somewhat of a filter for the surrounding areas. So they will filter out a lot of the different things in the environment. And they're really crucial to a lot of these wetland habitats, these, these uh, what they would call a riparian habitat, which is where stream side with the creek in, the, in the, these areas. So animals uh, benefit from it greatly. So these are very important and we need to take care of them. And if you come by here, take a minute, walk to the edge if you can do it without sinking up to your shins in mud see how many animals you can see. We're going to do that right now and just see what's out here, what kind of biodiversity we can find. 